Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be taking a look at this MSI Z170A Gaming M5 motherboard and Skylake is here, yay! And it's all mine, <laughs> This is a Socket LGA 1151 board with the Intel Z170 chipset. This motherboard comes with Click BIOS 5 and Steel Series peripherals will work great with MSI gaming motherboards. It's military class 5 certified with titanium chokes, which is very impressive, and these chokes withstand higher temps and have efficient heat dissipation. You get a one-year premium subscription to XSplit Gamecaster, and you can overclock using the MSI Gaming app. With OC Engine 2, you can overclock per megahertz. Skylake is winning! You get an unlimited RAM disk that speeds system performance, and this motherboard is compatible with Windows 10, and I'll probably upgrade to that for my next build. It comes with Audio Boost 3 and a Hemic Audio Enhancer, with dual OPA 1652 amps and metal EMI shielding for even more awesome sound quality over the Audio Boost 2. The Hemic is a software solution for you to tweak and enhance your audio. And you get killer E2400 gigabit LAN with intelligent AES 2.0 that automatically prioritizes game traffic over other apps. There's also MSI's Twin Turbo M.2 connectors, but more on that later. This is the second motherboard from MSI that I've seen USB 3.1 on, the other being the Z97A Gaming 6. You can find that video on JTL, and USB 3.1 Gen 2 supports 10 gigabit per second speeds. I saw the steel armor for PCIe slots in person on a few motherboards at Computex, and I can't wait to show you guys up close in this video. There's also DDR4 Boost. It's supposed to help the memory signal stay pure for max performance and stability by isolating the memory circuitry. And there's Game Boost. It comes with an 11th setting at 5 GHz for overclocking. Let's see what you get in the box. Here's a driver CD, quick install guide, detailed manual, SATA cable labels for those who have a lot of drives and a bad memory. This is a door hanger, mostly for travel, I presume. There's even a thank you note from MSI. Aw, they shouldn't have. You get four SATA 6 gigabit per second cables, two L-shaped, and two straight plugs, as well as a foam padded IO shield with classic MSI red and black colors. Here's an SLI flexible bridge and MSI Gaming G series case badge. As you can see, the PCB is black, which is a fan favorite. This is an ATX form factor board measuring 305 millimeters or 12 inches by 244 millimeters or 9.6 inches. As for the design, it's black and red mostly, of course, and you get a unique dragonfly wing look on the VRM cooler. Me thinks, anyhow. There's also an interesting pattern on the cooler above the Z170 Express chipset. There's a total of five four-pin fan headers, two CPU fan connectors, and three system fan connectors. This is the LGA1151 CPU socket, and it supports six-gen Intel Core processors. Here's a look at the four DDR4 DIMM slots. You get dual-channel memory supporting up to 64 gigs, as well as support for DDR4 up to 3600 MHz overclocked. You also have support for ECC unbuffered memory and Intel XMP. I believe this is the XMP LED. The LED shows the XMP status. Here are the two M.2 32 gigabit per second slots. They support PCIe 3.0 X4 and SATA 6 gigabit per second standards, as well as PCIe 3.0 X4 NVMe mini SAS SSD with Turbo U.2 host card. There's support for up to 64 gigabit per second speeds with twin turbo, yowza, and you can install up to an 80 millimeter or 3.14 inch length card. There are three PCIe 3.0 X16 slots on this board. Single card setup supports X16 mode, dual card setup supports X8 X8 modes, and triple card setup supports X8 X8 X4 modes and X8 X8 X1 modes. There's a very handy diagram on page 30 of the user guide that shows you what that looks like. You can set up two-way NVIDIA SLI or three-way AMD Crossfire. Here's a closer look at the steel armor on the PCIe slots. It prevents damage to the slot in case you somehow rage mode on the card and yank it out of the slot hard enough to pull the slot out too. I don't see that happening with me as I'm usually very careful about these things. It also helps with cooling. I wish all three PCIe slots had this armor, but most peeps probably won't be doing a three-way setup. Also, let's not forget about these four PCIe 3.0 X1 slots for plugging in a sound card, debug card, network card, and the like. This is the CMOS battery and clear CMOS jumper to the right of that, and next to the jumper is the chassis intrusion connector. On the top edge is the 8-pin CPU power port, and to the right are the CPU fan 1 and CPU fan 2 connectors. On the right edge is the system fan 3 connector, 24-pin main power connector, and USB 3.1 Gen 1 connector. Next to the USB 3 are the SATA ports. You get 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Four ports are reserved for SATA Express. Check page 34 of the manual for the M.2, SATA, and SATA E combination table. RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10 are available on SATA 1 to SATA 6. Beneath the SATA ports is the debug code LED. Check page 42 for the debug code LED table. On the bottom edge are the system panel connectors, two USB 2.0 connectors, serial port connector, and TPM module connector. To the left of that is the JTBT1 connector for connecting a specific card. This is a mystery to me at the moment, but I'm sure I'll find out in time. And here's the slow-mo booting switch, system fan 2 connector, and audio connector. This PCB is four layers thick, as indicated by the number on this brown box. 
Finally, we have a look at the rear I.O. Here's the PS2 connector for a PS2 mouse or keyboard. Beneath that are two USB 2.0 ports. These three ports are also gaming device ports, which means they work with Mouse Master software so that you can fully program your gaming mouse. There's also the gaming hotkey feature that allows you to customize your F1 to F12 keys. Next to that is the DVI-D connector. It supports a max res of 1920 by 1200 at 60Hz. And we have the USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A port here with the USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port below that. Both can achieve max speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. Type-C has a reversible design and 15 watt support. These are the two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and an HDMI port right here. It supports a max res of 4096 by 2160 at 24 Hz and 2560 by 1600 at 60 Hz. The LAN port features 15 kV anti-surge protection, and I wish all motherboards came with wireless, but I guess it's easy enough to include an add-on. And here's two more USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. To conclude, we have the audio ports with optical spit of out. You get Realtek ALC 1150 codec with 8 channel 7.1 HD audio. That wraps up this look at the MSI Z170A Gaming M5 motherboard. I'm Joanne, and if you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Joanne Tech Lover Facebook, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Don't forget to hit the donate button to help expand this channel and feed this techie. Be sure to check out my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle for everyday gadgets, and JTL Cuteness Overload for an injection of cuteness into your day. Last but not least is storeenvy.com where you can go ahead and check out my 8.5 by 11 inch autograph prints that you can buy. I guess all that's left to say is mwah!